In this video, we're going to focus on BJT transistors and how they act as electronic switches. But let's start with the basics. So this is the symbol of an NPN transistor. My drawing is not perfect, but we'll make the best of it. This is the base. Here we have the collector, and that is the emitter of the NPN transistor. Beta describes the ratio between the collector current and the base current. So if we send a small current of, let's say, 1 milliamp to the base of the NPN transistor, by the way, this is the flow of conventional current. Electron flow is in the other direction. And let's say that beta is 100. Then the collector current will be 100 times greater than the base current. And this is how the transistor acts as a switch. When a small current is applied to the base of the transistor, a larger current can flow from the collector to the emitter of the transistor. So you could use a small current to activate a circuit with a larger current. Now the emitted current is the sum of the base current and the collector current. So it's 1 plus 100, it's going to be 101 milliamps. Now let's work on an example problem. So you can see this in action. So first, we're going to draw a chemical battery. And then we're going to have a switch. We'll call that switch S1. This is the positive terminal of the battery. And the shorter side is the negative terminal of the battery. And let's use a 6 volt battery. And then we're going to add a current limiting resistor which we'll call R1, and we'll give R1 a value of 10 kilo ohms. We're going to connect R1 to the base of the transistor. So here we have the base, the collector, and the emitter. And then we're going to attach a resistor. Actually, first let's put a light emitting diode. And we're going to use a green light emitting diode. And then let's add a resistor here, which we'll call R2. So R2, we're going to give it a value of 1K, or 1 kilo ohm. And let's put a multimeter across the collector and the emitter. So what will be the voltage that the multimeter reads in this circuit? Feel free to pause the video and calculate the voltage. We're going to set the emitter to ground. Now in this circuit, Conventional current will flow, once the switch is closed, it will flow through R1, through the base of the transistor, to the emitter, and then back to the battery. That small current will be used to activate a larger current that will flow through the LED, through the collector, and then to the emitter, and then back to the battery. And so that's another way in which a BJT transistor can act as an electronic switch. You could use a switch to control a small current flow into the base of the transistor, which will activate a larger current flow into the collector of the transistor. But let's calculate the voltage at point C. In order to do that, we need to calculate the current flowing in each branch. Now, before we solve this, let's increase R1 to 500 kilo ohms. Let me write this over here. So that's going to be a much better value. And beta, let's say that beta for the transistor is 200. So with this information, go ahead and calculate the base and collector currents, as well as the voltage that the multimeter will read. In order to do this, we need to be familiar with something called 
Kirchhoff's voltage law, which states that the sum of the voltages in a closed loop must add a zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the ground to a potential of zero volts. Traveling in this direction, the battery provides energy to the circuit, so it's going to increase the voltage going in that direction. So the voltage, or rather the electric potential at this point, will be 6 volts. And once the switch is closed, the electric potential here will also be 6 volts. Now, the voltage across the base and the emitter of the NPN transistor, that's going to be 0.6 volts. It can vary between 0.6 and 0.7 volts, but to keep things simple, we're going to go with 0.6 volts. So the base is 0.6 volts higher than the emitter. So this is 0.6. So now that we know the electric potentials across R1, we can calculate the current flowing through it. Keep in mind, conventional current flows from a high potential towards a low potential. And we could use Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. Rearranging that equation will help us to calculate the current. The current flowing in a resistor is equal to the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance of the resistor. Now the voltage across R1 is the electric potential difference between those two points. We can call this point A and then the other point B. So the voltage is going to be 6 minus 0.6. So we have a voltage of 5.4 volts across R1. And R1 is 500 kilo ohms. Now, when you divide the voltage in volts by the resistance in ohms, you get the current in amps. But when you divide volts by kilo ohms, this will give you the current in milliamps. So 5.4 divided by 500 will give us a current of 0 0.0108 milliamps. So now that we know the base current, IB, how can we use this to calculate IC? What would you say? Once you know the base current, you could use beta to calculate the collector current. Keep in mind, the collector current is equal to beta times the base current. So it's going to be 200 times 0 0.0108. So the current that is flowing through R2, through the LED, and to the collector, that is the collector current. That is equal to, let's put it here, 2.16 milliamps. It's just beta times the base current. So now that we know the collector current, we can calculate the voltages around R2 and the LED. So anywhere along this line, the electric potential will be 6. Now that we know the current flowing through R2, we can calculate the potential on the other side. So let's call this point D and point E. The voltage across a resistor is equal to the current flowing through it times the resistance. And the voltage is basically the potential difference. So it's going to be the potential difference at point D minus the potential difference at point E, and that's going to equal IR. Rearranging the equation, VE is going to equal VD plus actually minus IR. VD is higher than VE because current will always flow from a high potential to a low potential. So to get VE, we need to subtract VD by IR. So the potential at D is 6. The current flowing through, the, uh, through R2 is 2.16 milliamps times a resistance of 1 kilo ohm. So 1 milliamp times 1 kilo ohm equals 1 volt. So 1 kilo ohm times 2.16 milliamps is 2.16 volts. 6 minus 2.16 volts gives us a potential of 3.84 volts at point E. Now in order to calculate the potential at point C, we need to know what the voltage drop 
across the green LED is. What would you say the voltage drop is? The voltage drop of a typical green LED is around 2 to 2.4 volts. So 2.2 would be a nice average. So the potential at C is going to be lower than the potential at E because the LED is absorbing energy from the circuit. And so it's going to cause a drop in the voltage as you go from E to C. And plus the current is flowing in that direction. So 3.84 minus 2.2 gives us a potential at point C of 1.64 volts. So if you were to connect the multimeter between the collector and the emitter, you would read a voltage of something around 1.6 volts. So that's also VCE, the collector emitter voltage. It's approximately 1.64 volts. So now you know how to solve a simple transistor circuit. And now you see how a transistor can be used as an electronic switch. We could use a small current to drive a larger current in another circuit. And that's how most transistors work as switches. Now, transistors can also act as inverters. Let me illustrate. So first, let's draw a circuit. On the left, we have the input, and on the right, we have the output. So let's say this is R1, and this is R2. So R1, we're going to give it a value of 50 kilo ohms, and R2, that's going to be 1 kilo ohm. Now let's say the voltage here is 9 volts. So we're going to apply a pulse. Let's say the pulse has a voltage of 5 volts. So let's also make a table that describes the voltages at the input and the voltage at the output. When the voltage at the input is 5 volts, what is the voltage at the output? And when the voltage at the input is 0 volts, what's the voltage at the output? So let's understand what's happening. When we apply an input voltage of 5 volts, current is going to flow through R1, through the base of the transistor, and to the emitter. And that is going to activate the transistor on the other side. So current will begin to flow from the collector to the emitter. And so what happens is, let's use a 10 kilo ohm resistor instead of a 50 kilo ohm resistor because we want to drive the transistor to saturation. And so when that happens, VCE will be approximately 0 volts. It might be like 0 0.01 or 0.1 volts, but for all practical purposes, it's going to be close to 0. But when you have a significant amount of current flowing through the base, you can basically drive a large current through the collector and VCE can approach zero when this transistor goes into saturation. A typical beta value for an NPN transistor can vary between 100 and 300. And notice the ratio between R1 and R2 in that it's, it's 10. So beta is not going to be anywhere near 100 for this particular circuit if you were to calculate the relative currents. And so when, R, when the ratio between R1 and R2 is much less than beta, it will be very easy to drive the transistor to saturation, which means when that current, the base current, flows to this part of the transistor, VCE is going to go to zero. And so the output would read zero. So what you need to take away from this is this. When the input is 5 volts, 
And if the current that's flown to the base is large enough to drive the transistor to saturation, the output voltage will be zero volts. Now, when the input is zero, there's not going to be any current flowing to the base of the transistor. So if there's no current, then there's not going to be any current flowing through the collector and the emitter of the transistor, which means that there's no current flowing through R2. If there's no current flowing through R2, there's no voltage drop. So the voltage at point C will be the same as the voltage of the source. It's going to be 9 volts because there's no current flowing through R2. So thus the output will be whatever the collector supply voltage is, VCC. So notice how the transistor can serve as an inverter. When the input is high, the output is low. And when the input is low, the output is high. So you can rewrite the table like this. When the input is low, the output is high. And when the output, when the input is high, the output is low. And so that's a basic inverter circuit. So that's how you could use the NPN transistor as an inverter for digital circuits. So that's basically it for this video. Now you know how to use the BJT transistor as an electronic switch and also how to use it as an inverter. Now for those of you who want more videos on electronics, science projects, and other interesting stuff, feel free to take a look at the videos that I'm going to post in the description section below. Thanks for watching.